like to do a little reading for you all from Manly P. Hall's, one of his writings, from Rosicrucian and Masonic Origins. He states, and he's a big shot for the Freemasons, Freemasonry is a fraternity within a fraternity and outer organization concealing an inner brotherhood of the elect. Before you can intelligently discuss the origin of the craft, it's called, it's necessary to establish the existence of the two separate yet interdependent orders, the one visible and the other invisible. So, he's already telling you at the outset, it's layers, a frat within a frat, an outer organization conceals an inner brotherhood of the elect, we call it the craft. And we're going to scroll down and get some little different things that they talk about. The secret doctrine that flows through three Masonic symbols and those who have perpetuation in the invisible Masonic body is consecrated as a source in three ancient and exalted orders. The first is the Dionysiac Artificers, the second the Roman Collegia, the third the Ara Arabian Rosicrucians. The Dionysians were the master builders of the ancient world originally founded to design and erect the theaters of Dionysus wherein were enacted the tragic dramas of the rituals. This order was repeatedly elevated by popular acclaim to greater dignity, until at last it was entrusted with the planning construction of all public edifices concerned with the commonwealth or the worship of the gods and heroes. Hiram, king of Tyre, was the patron of the Dionysians, who flourished in Tyre and Sidon. Hiram of Beth, we may believe the sacred account, was himself a grand master of this most noble order of pagan builders. King Solomon, in his wisdom, accepted the services of this famous craftsman, and thus at the instigation of Hiram, king of Tyre, Hiram of Bith, though himself a member of a different faith, journeyed from his own country to design and supervise the erection of the everlasting house to the true God on Mount Moriah. Tools of the builder's craft were first employed by the Dionysians as symbols under which to conceal the mysteries of the soul and secret of human regeneration. The Dionysians also first likened man to a rough ashlar, which trued into a finished block through the instrument of reason, could be fitted into the structure of that living and eternal temple built without the sound of hammer, the voice of workmen, or any tool of contention. The mysteries of Egypt and Persia that had found a haven in the Arabian desert reached Europe by way of the nice Templars and the Rosicrucians. The Temple of the Rose Cross at Damascus had preserved the secret philosophy of Sharon's Rose, The Druses of the Lebanon still retain the mysticism of ancient Syria. And the dervishes, as they lean on their carved and crotched, crotched sticks, still meditate upon the secret instruction perpetuated from the days of the four caliphs. From the far place of Iraq and the hidden retreats of the Sufi mystics, the ancient wisdom found its way into Europe. The Jacques de Molay burned by the Holy Inquisition merely because he wore the Red Cross of the Templar. What were those secrets to which he was true even in death? Did his companion knights perish with him merely because they had amassed a fortune and exercised an unusual degree of temporal power? To the thoughtless, these may constitute ample grounds, but to those who can pierce the film of the spacious and superficial, they are assuredly insufficient. It was not the physical power of the Templars, but the knowledge which they had brought with them from the East that the Church feared. 
The Templars had discovered part of the great arcanum. They had become wise in those mysteries which had been celebrated in Mecca. Mecca, as in Islam, thousands of years before the advent of Muhammad. They had read a few pages from the dread book of the Anthropos. Before this knowledge, they were doomed to die. What was the black magic of which the Templars were accused? What was Baphomet, the goat of Mendez? These mysteries they were declared to have celebrated. All these are questions worthy of the thoughtful consideration of every studious mason. Truth is eternal. The so-called revelations of truth that come in different religions are actually but a re-emphasis of an ever-existing doctrine. Thus, Moses did not originate a new religion for Israel. He simply adapted the mysteries of Egypt to the needs of Israel. The ark, triumphantly borne by the twelve tribes through the wilderness, was copied after the Isaac ark, which may still be traced in faint as relief upon the ruins of the Temple of Philae. Even the two brooding cherubim over the mercy seat are visible in the Egyptian carving furnishing indubitable evidence that the secret doctrine of Egypt was the prototype of Israel's mystery religion. In this reformation of Indian philosophy, Buddha, likewise, did not reject the esotericism of the Brahmins, but rather adapted this esotericism to the needs of the masses in India. The mystic secrets locked within the Holy Vedas were thus disclosed in order that all men irrespective of castly dis distinction, might partake of wisdom and share in a common heritage of good. Jesus was a rabbi of the Jews, a teacher of the Holy Law, who discoursed in the synagogue, interpreting the Torah according to the teachings of his sect. He brought no new message, nor were his reformations radical. He merely tore away the veil from the temple in order that not only Pharisee and Sadducee, but also publican and sinner might together behold the glory of an ageless faith. In his cavern on Mount Hira, Muhammad prayed not for new truths, but for old truths to be restated in their original purity and simplicity, in order that men might understand again that primitive religion, God's clear revelation to the first patriarchs. The mysteries of Islam have been celebrated in the great black cube of the Kaaba, centuries before the holy pilgrimage. The prophet was but the reformer of the decadent Pagadandam, the smasher of idols, the purifier of defiled mysteries. The dervishes who patterned their garments after those of the prophets still preserve that inner teaching of the elect and for them the axis of the earth. The supreme hierophant still sits, visible only to the faithful, in meditation upon the flat roof of the Kaaba. Neither carpenter nor camel driver, as Abdul Baha might have said, can fashion a world religion from the substance of his own mind. Neither prophet nor savior preached a doctrine which was his own, but in language suitable to his time and race, retold that ancient wisdom preserved within the mysteries since the dawning of human consciousness. So with the Masonic mysteries of today, each Mason has at hand those lofty principles of universal order upon whose certainties the face of mankind have ever been established. Each Mason has at hand those lofty principles of universal order upon pregnant with life and hope to those millions who wander in the darkness of unenlightenment. Well, well, well. That's quite a mouthful. I've got a lot of Manly P. Hall to be reading on just to see how much more garbage these people who follow these teachings actually chew up swallow, and believe. Now, the 
Pike and Hall. <clears throat> Albert Pike and Manley Hall are very highly regarded in the craft. Yes. In the Masonic. In the kissing cousin of Illuminates. Yeah, they're little interchangeable satanic orders. As you can see, I have quite a bit of reading to do. I barely scratched the surface of this disc that I bought. Whenever I bought David Flynn's brother's book, Secrets of the Labyrinth. You see they have some William Cooper here. I like that one, Behold a Pale Horse. I've listened to that video before. And it has illustrated the masonry. All kinds of things that I can go through to touch on. Antiquity. We have Osiris and the Egyptian resurrection. Here's some more. Character and claims of Freemasonry by Charles Finney. More than dogma, I have actually more than dogma I can I can go in there. See, when you read these things, you can get inside the mind of these writers. There's also one here, the Fallen Angels and the Heroes of Myth. I'm gonna start that one pretty pretty soon. I also have some other books, Tom Horn books. That I received with it. But as I was saying, you can get inside their mind and see what 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 exactly where are you coming from? What what is your real belief? You know, it's not every day that people are reading average people are reading Manley Hall and Albert Pike. It's just not the prescribed thing that turns their you know, trips their trigger and turns them on. So they're oblivious to who these people are. That's why most people are oblivious to Freemasonry and Illuminati. You know, if you ask someone, the average person, I guarantee you, hey, what's a Freemason? What's Freemasonry? They're going to maybe, maybe give you an answer. They'll give you something. I don't know. Or if they do answer it, they're going to say, Oh, what those guys, the ones that made bricks, you know, do stonework and stuff. That's 99.99999 infinity is the answer that you're probably going to get if they answer it without saying, I don't know. So they're, they're oblivious to what Freemasonry actually is. It's like a friend of mine, you know, he didn't believe what I told him about Freemasonry because his uncle was a Freemason. <laughs> that made sense. I don't believe it. My uncle's one. He's a nice guy. Well, I never said his uncle was not a nice guy. And when I asked him more questions about it, you know, what level was he? I don't know. Did you ever ask him? Oh, you ever ask him anything about it? Oh, well, <laughs> there's his logic for not believing what I was trying to tell him. Because his uncle was one, and his uncle was a nice guy. See how it works? Most people are oblivious to it. So anyhow, I'm going to get back to, to the Manly P. Hall. And do some more reading about it, but rest assured... 2015 is going to be a bad year in more ways than one. And we're just beginning to see it. Put on the armor of God and shield yourself 